Hey guys, it's Jan here. As we've come to expect from Marvel's productions, there's a stack of Easter eggs and references in Daredevil Season 2 to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the comic books. With all 13 episodes out now on Netflix, I've put together all the Easter eggs and references I could find in this video. If you've spotted other ones too, do let me know in the comments below. Just before I kick off, I've got an awesome giveaway from our friends at Entertainment Earth. For a chance to win this cool set of Daredevil collectibles, including a Daredevil action figure, Daredevil watch and Daredevil villain bullseye piece plus collector magazine, make sure you subscribe and comment about your favourite season 2 easter egg on this video. For more details and ways to enter the comp, check out the Gleam link in the video description below and also the links to the prizes on Entertainment Earth. And just a quick reminder, there will be spoilers ahead, so if you're not ready for that, check out my non-spoiler review of Season 2 right here. Kicking off with the costumes, this season Daredevil gets various upgrades, starting with the addition of some creepy red eyes that recall the time in the Shadowland comics where Matt Murdock was corrupted by the Hand and later possessed by the demon the Ninja Clan serves. And Daredevil's costumer Melvin Potts also gives him new billy clubs that double as grappling hooks, just like Daredevil has in the comics. Elektra's costume isn't as revealing as the way she's often dressed in the comics or when Jennifer Garner played her in the 2005 movie, but there are nods to her classic red colours under her more practical black gear. And it's interesting that after the hand recovers Elektra from her grave, she's clothed in red fabric that's much closer to her comic book look. Elektra also got to wield her classic scythe from the comics after she took them from Jacques Duchamp, whose stick sent to kill her. There's loads of teasers to the Punisher's iconic white skull from the comics throughout the episodes too, including x-rays of Frank Castle's skull, and when Castle spray paints his armoured vest in the finale, it's a reference to a draft of the 1989 Punisher movie with Dolph Lundgren, in which Castle spray painted the iconic skull onto his Kevlar vest. The scene was cut from that movie by a producer, as it was considered too comic booky. But in Daredevil, we do get a proper shot of Castle in his final uniform, with skull symbol clearly showing in that final rooftop scene. Frank Castle's story of losing his wife and children to the mob is an echo of his origin story in the comics where his family was gunned down in Central Park. The x-ray of Castle's skull also shows a dark circle to the left, and Kara mentions that he was also hit in the head, a reference to the bullet wound Castle took to the head in the comics during the mob attack. Numerous other storylines from the Daredevil and Punisher comic books have also been adapted for Season 2. For example, the failed sting organised by Reyes, for which he decided not to clear Central Park, is a reference to the comic Punisher Kills the Marvel Universe. In that comic, the Avengers and the X-Men accidentally kill Frank Castle's family in Central Park while thwarting an alien strike force, and Captain America admits they didn't have time to clear the area. The scene in which Castle chains up Daredevil on a rooftop is an homage to the Punisher comic The Choice, in which the Punisher is about to assassinate the criminal Dino Nucci, and he gives Daredevil a gun telling him the only way to stop him shooting Nucci is to kill the Punisher himself. The TV show finds an interesting resolution with Matt shooting his chains off rather than trying to shoot the Punisher as he does in the comics. The fight scene between the two which follows also has shades of Daredevil number 257, where Punisher and Daredevil fight and argue on a rooftop about what justice the criminal Alfred Coppersmith deserves. By the way, the Punisher's line to Daredevil, you're one bad day away from being me, goes back to the Daredevil comics and also reminds me of the Joker's one bad day line in the Batman comic, The Killing Joke. And Castle's line to Daredevil that he's a half measure is a callback to Daredevil's first season, when Stick criticised Matt for not going far enough to take out bad guys. When Daredevil asks the Punisher if he's a Catholic and Frank replies that he used to be, it's a nod to the What If comic where Castle visits church for confession and to light candles. The dog Frank Castle picks up after massacring the Irish mob is a reference to the Punisher's dog Max in the comics, who Castle takes care of after taking out a drug dealer. And the Irish leader Nesbitt is based on the Irish mob leader of the same name from the Punisher Volume 6 comics, who gives a similar rousing speech to his mob associates. The Irish mob boss Finn, who turns up in Episode 4, tortures Castle and is ultimately blasted in the face by Castle's gun, is likely based on the comic book character Finn Cooley. Finn Cooley is an Irish terrorist in the Punisher Max comics and has a facial disfigurement after he accidentally set off a bomb in Belfast. 
Melvin Potter, Daredevil's costume maker, returns again for season 2, with new easter eggs in his workshop to his origins in the comics as the villain Gladiator. In the second episode, we see him get nervous and pick up a circular saw, which is a nod to the weapons that Gladiator uses. Melvin also reveals some body armour in episode 4, which teases a little of the symbol he wears as Gladiator. The Spanish poster for the film Revenge of the Gladiators is still there from season 1, and there's a page on his wall with the words Giant Frogs on it, which is a reference to the villain Leapfrog, who Gladiator teams up with alongside Electro to form the group Electro's Emissaries of Evil. And by the way, Stiltman's legs and armour from the first season are still in Melvin's workshop, which might come in handy for Turk, who just got his leg cut really badly by the hand. In the comics, a small-time crook Turk steals Stiltman's legs, which could be a hint that we'll see Stiltman on the show in the future. Nobu comes back from the dead this season, suggesting that his character is based on the ninja Kariji, who works with the hand in the comics and can recover from death through meditation. And when Styx slices Nobu's head off after Daredevil throws him from the roof, it's a nod to the way Elektra appears to kill off Kariji in the comics by decapitating him. But interestingly, there's a second character that Nobu could be based on, as it was revealed this season that Nobu's full name is Nobu Yoshioka. In the comics, the character of Kajunobu Yoshioka was instrumental in bringing the hand together in the 16th century. When Nobu kills Electra with a sigh on the rooftop, it feels similar to the way that Bullseye also killed her with a sigh in the Daredevil comics. And seeing her body dug up by the hand hints at the way she was resurrected by the hand in the comics, where the hand's ninjas are ordered to give their blood for Electra. Bullseye still hasn't made an appearance on the TV show, but like in season 1, we get another tease for him in the coffee cups at Metro General, which have playing cards printed on them. Bullseye often used playing cards as weapons in the comics, and the coffee cups also look like the wild card poker coffee cup from Terminator 2. We also get more hints that Madame Gao may be based on Crane Mother from the comics. In season 1, Gao said her homeland was considerably farther than China, and this season she stated that New York is only one of her territories. In the comics, Crane Mother rules over one of the legendary cities of heaven, Kunzi, and she also has links to Iron Fist. The opening scene after the first episode's credits, which shows kids playing by a leaking fire hydrant in the street, may be a nod to the Man Without Fear comics in which a young Matt Murdock steals a baton from a police officer who's lecturing a bunch of kids about playing with a city fire hydrant. And when Electra and Matt take off in a fast sports car, it's a little callback to when Electra speeds off in her car with Matt in the Man Without Fear comics. The Punisher Warzone comic book series also gets a big nod throughout the season, with Warzone mentioned multiple times in regards to the Punisher's activities. Colonel Ray Schoonover, who turns out to be the blacksmith smuggling drugs into New York, has a similar story in the Punisher War Journal series, in which Schoonover smuggled drugs out of Vietnam hidden in body bags. By the way, blacksmith in the comics is the name of a Skrull alien. And in the episode finale, after Punisher kills Schoonover, he returns to his own home to recover a disc with the word Micro on it. In the comics, Micro is a nickname for David Linus Lieberman, aka Microchip, a computer programmer who helps Castle with weapons and technology. Pier 81, where Blacksmith's drug shipment comes in, seems to be a regular criminal haunt in Daredevil's New York, as it was a Pier 81 warehouse in Season 1, where Daredevil went to find Fisk and ended up fighting Nobu. The way the Punisher took out the Mexican cartel and hung them to die in a meat storage plant is a nod to how the Punisher used equipment like meat hooks and grinders, or even meat itself, to deal with opponents in the streets of Laredo comics, the 1989 and 2004 Punisher movies, and the 2005 Punisher video game which features a meatpacking plant. Like Will Simpson from Jessica Jones, Frank Castle's military background in the comics has been updated to serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. But there's still a nod to Castle's comic book history in Vietnam when he talks to the Vietnam War veteran on the roof in episode 3. And as well as being an obvious reference to his daughter's favourite book and Castle's feelings of guilt, One Batch, Two Batch might also be a subtle nod to the similarities between Frank Castle and Will Simpson, whose medication consists of one red pill to get him going, two white to keep him even, and one blue to bring him down. There's a nod to Wilson Fisk's alter ego of Kingpin when Dutton tells Fisk, I'm the Kingpin of this bitch. And when Dutton's dying in his prison hospital bed, Fisk visits him and says, In prison, there's only room for one Kingpin. Fisk's lawyer, Mr. Donovan, is likely inspired by the character Big Ben Donovan, a Harlem based lawyer who appears in the Luke Cage comics, so there's a good chance we'll see him back in the Luke Cage series. And just before Punisher escapes from prison, he says to Fisk, Next time I see you, only one of us walks away. This might be a nod to the Punisher Max series, where Punisher and Fisk have a brutal, bloody showdown in which the Punisher finally kills the Kingpin. 
Blake Tower's comic book counterpart is New York's district attorney, who helps Daredevil catch various criminals. In the show, we get to see him help Karen Page, who does most of the detective work this season, and seems to have taken on the role of Ben Urich, who was killed in season one by Fisk. Page has taken Urich's car, and she later takes his job and desk at the New York Bulletin. Karen Page's past gets explored a little further this season, and we find out she had a brother. When Karen opens up the file on her in Ben Urich's old office, there's a glimpse of a newspaper cutting with the headline, Mystery Accident Causes Teen Fatality. The whole article isn't visible, but one part of it reads that a young man, Kevin Paxton Page of Fagan Corners, veered off the road for an unknown reason and was killed. Further down the article, there's mention of a little old man with a grey military moustache limping away, and something about a girl of eight or nine crying, and mention of a brother. There's no record of Karen Page having a brother in the comics, however she does have a father called Paxton Page, a scientist who exposed himself to too much cobalt radiation and became a daredevil villain called Death's Head. When Castle says to Karen she looks like she knows how to use a gun, it's a neat callback to when Karen shot Fisk's right-hand man Wesley last season. And there's another nod to that moment when Foggy and Matt's client, Mr Maxwell, says your girl's a badass, and Karen replies you've no idea. There's more hints in season two to Claire Dawson's alter ego of Night Nurse in the comics when we find out she works the night shift at Metro General Hospital. And there's a reference back to Luke Cage and Claire's appearance in Jessica Jones when she talks about getting into trouble after looking after a big guy at the hospital. Jessica Jones herself got a direct mention when Foggy's ex-girlfriend Marcy reveals that the super-powered private investigator is already under scrutiny. There's also a cool cameo by Carrie Ann Moss as Jerry Hogarth, the tough lawyer introduced in Jessica Jones. And while Foggy was trying to find Claire at Metro General, one of the nurses mentions a Mr Carver, which could be a nod to William Carver who once worked for Foggy in the comics, and also became Thunderbolt in the Luke Cage and Iron Fist comics. When Foggy jokes about a code name for Frank Castle, he suggests Killdozer or Dumbass with a Gun, which is a funny link to when Jessica Jones taunted Kilgrave about his name. Killdozer is also the name of a minor Marvel villain who appeared in a Marvel superhero summer special. And when a Dogs of Hell gang member says to Foggy, you got guts, Harvard, it's a nice nod to the alias Foggy creates for himself in the Daredevil comics when he tries to infiltrate a gang as Guts Nelson. Sergeant Mahoney compares the Punisher to Charles Bronson in the 1974 movie Death Wish, which is about a man who takes up vigilanteism after his wife is killed and his daughter's raped, a parallel to Frank Castle's personal family tragedy. And Mahoney also makes the first reference to the current theme in the MCU, and specifically Captain America Civil War, of whether the public supports superheroes or whether their powers should be controlled. This theme keeps cropping up throughout the season, for example when Mahoney quips that someday he's going to tell Daredevil how to do his job, a little nod to Civil War's Sokovia Accords. Mahoney's foreboding that somebody's going to get caught in the crossfire sooner or later likely foreshadows the death of an important character in Civil War. And there are plenty of easter eggs to the rest of the MCU. The Roxxon Corporation also returns, having appeared previously in Season 1 and in the Iron Man movies Agent Carter and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The name of Roxxon boss Hiroshi is likely a nod to Lord Hiroshi in the comics, who led a faction of the Hand. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. also gets some specific easter eggs. The motorcycle club Dogs of Hell appeared in the first season of S.H.I.E.L.D., where they were mind-controlled. By the way, when the Dogs of Hell gang are hosing down the blood of a stolen truck, it's a callback to Daredevil Season 1 when Wilson Fisk's car was being hosed down after he smashed Anatoly's head in with his car door. And the stolen truck here belongs to Redfield Electronics, owned by Jim Redfield, who appears briefly in the Thunderstrike comics. There's a flashback moment in episode 3 with a nun's habit and female voiceover that seems a likely hint to Matt's mother, who in the comics becomes a nun called Margaret. And the orphanage Matt Murdock stayed in for a time is called St Agnes, the same orphanage that Sky from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. grew up in. And at the New York Bulletin, there's a newspaper headline, Cybertech Settles, which is a reference to the tech company that created the cyborg Deathlock on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There are also more headlines around the office such as Harlem Terror, referring to the duel of Harlem between Hulk and Abomination in the Incredible Hulk film. The Battle of New York headline references the Chitauri invasion in The Avengers. And when Mitchell Ellison says the newspaper servers are wiped out in the incident, it could be another connection to the first Avengers movie, or possibly Avengers Age of Ultron, when Ultron affected the internet. There's a Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back reference where we see a drawing by one of Frank Castle's kids of Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker dueling with lightsabers. And the show continues in the tradition of Marvel's Phase 2 homage to Star Wars limb loss, with the Irish mobster who loses a hand when he's gunned down by Castle, and with Stick cutting off a ninja's hand when he arrives to rescue Daredevil and Elektra. 
Matt's romantic moment in the rain with Karen is a callback to the kiss scene between Ben Affleck's Daredevil and Jennifer Garner's Elektra in the critically panned 2003 Daredevil movie. And the Yakutomi building that Elektra and Daredevil infiltrate feels like a little twist on the Nakatomi Plaza from Die Hard. And Daredevil's corridor and stairway fight with the Dogs of Hell is a callback to season 1 and draws on the movie's old boy and the raid. Foggy's line about the Punisher that it's not like our boy was out collecting for the Red Cross is a nod to a similar line Dirty Harry says about a rapist he shot. The billboard for standard heating oil, which appears at the location of the trap Raya set for Punisher, is a reference to the film A Most Violent Year, in which Oscar Isaac's character has to deal with truck hijackings, and it's funny because the Punisher just hijacked a truck in the previous episode. And there's a nod to Michael Mann's movie Manhunter when Daredevil says to Castle, I'm never gonna stop coming for you until I take you down, because you're insane. An echo of how Will Graham says to Hannibal Lecter that he caught him because he's insane. Lecter also tells Will that they're alike, as Punisher does with Daredevil. Props to Firepower who suggested this reference on my Daredevil review. The Daredevil production crew and Marvel artists also get some sneaky shoutouts this season. The name Sheila Iniego, who's the show's assistant accountant, is used for the pastor at the church where Daredevil faces off against the masked gunman in the opening episode. The name Ricky Wex, which Foggy mentions at the Dogs of Hell Club, is a nod to David Wex Wexler, one of the show's first assistant directors. The assignment board at the New York Bulletin has a list of reporters' names on it that are references to more crew. There's Dave McAllister, the key rigging grip, Alex Foreman, a production assistant, cameraman Quenel Jones, and set decorator Caroline Gertler. A second version of the board shows set decorator Stephanie Q. Bowen, stuntman Kevin Michael Murphy, and Daredevil Road Warrior comic book artist Peter to crowds. At Fogwell's gym, there's a poster with Ellison and Zeerlin, nods to Daredevil art assistant G. Garrett Ellison and graphics designer Zachary Zeerlin. And there's another poster with Little and Hardenberg, which are references to production assistants Ryan Little and Ashley Hardenberg. And the newspaper cutting detailing Paxton Page's death is written by Tiana Lazowskis, who's a construction PA on the Daredevil set. So guys, what other easter eggs and references did you spot in Daredevil Season 2? Which ones were your favourites and how do you think this season compared to Season 1? I'm looking forward to reading your comments below. If you're a fan of comic book TV shows, check out my Jessica Jones, Daredevil and Iron Fist videos here. And also 10 things you probably didn't know about The Flash. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment about your favourite Season 2 easter egg on this video for a chance to win this fantastic set of Daredevil collectibles from our friends at Entertainment Earth. For more details and ways to enter the comp, plus links to what you can win, check out the Gleam link in the video description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time, Yubikaye superhero lovers!